We are also taking a look right now at changing the way you travel. Virgin Hyperloop. Hyperloop One is disrupting the transportation industry using new technology to allow passenger vehicles to move at speeds of nearly 700 miles an hour. Today, the company is meeting with the Colorado Department of Public Transportation to conduct a feasibility study in that state. Joining me right now is Virgin Hyperloop One co-founder and CTO Josh Geigel, along with the CEO of Virgin Hyperloop One, Rob Lloyd, good to see you both. Thank you so much for joining us. Congratulations. This is huge what you're doing. And Rob, you recently raised $85 million in new funding. Let's talk about that. Uh, tell us about the company's progress and how that money will be used. Well, we have been raising money to build a technology. And obviously, as we go through that first phase of building a prototype, which Josh's team has just recently accomplished, we've proven it works. Now we're going to, into a phase of commercializing that technology working with governments, uh, regulators around the world, and that's really one of the reasons we're here, is because the opportunities to take the technology from what we've proven it works, to then into real production systems, exist around the world, and we think one of those huge opportunities is right here in the kingdom, as well as in the entire For GCC. For sure, I mean, I could understand the, the opportunity that you have here, but the opportunity is really across the world, right? What are the challenges that you've seen so far in terms of Hyperloop One? I think one of the biggest ones that we've seen is getting it into the conversation. So it was difficult in the U.S. for a while, but now we've had traction in Colorado, Missouri, Texas, and then getting into the conversation here in the GCC has been actually very easy because they don't have this technology yet, and this is a chance for them to leapfrog that and move with new technology. You know, when you look at working here in Saudi, you're really starting from scratch, aren't you? Exactly. So the idea of a greenfield city, a brand new port on the Red Sea, where infrastructure needs to be developed. And in fact, across the entire GCC, there isn't a regional net rail network, so we're not dealing with the same infrastructure that many countries invested in a century or two ago to drive industrialization. So when you look at the agenda here, the Vision 2030, trying to align infrastructure, new cities, uh, new manufacturing jobs in a very efficient economy, underlying that is a new mode of transportation. And we think Hyperloop is one of the elements that's going to allow that transformation. Is there a challenge in terms of labor? How do you get the right people to work on some of these new projects? I think that's one of the biggest reasons we've been attracted to this area is that there's a push in the vision for 2030 for jobs and manufacturing and just connectivity. So this next generation workforce, high skilled laborers, build, learning how to build Hyperloop then becomes an exportable skill for this whole region. That way it's the, the hub of the area. There's also the regulation, though, as you mentioned earlier, right? the regulatory environment, will it, will it encourage this? So there is no regulation for Hyperloop. You've got we're, to make it up as you plane, go along, I guess. We're a train, we're an autonomous vehicle, and as, the, as regulators struggle with those, actually the most attractive partners for us now are those that want to collaborate to write new regulations. So we're starting to see that emerging in some of the more progressive states. Yeah. Uh, in Texas and Colorado, the recent announcements by the governor of Missouri are bringing a hyperloop to that state to attract a second head office of Amazon. And obviously the work we've done here in the Gulf region, uh, in the Emirates, uh, in the UAE, and here in discussions. Let's write new regulations together for something that needs a regulation, but it doesn't fit exactly the rules we have today. Those that help us do that are going to be probably where we end up with the first projects. How long does it take to get this from dream to reality? Well, from dream till now, it's only been three years. Wow. We've built, That's fast. Uh, yeah, actually, here in a couple of weeks is my three year anniversary from sitting in a garage. And now we have about 300 people, and we built the whole test bed that you've seen in the desert. So we're thinking just a couple more years, and wow. it'll be here for all of us to ride. That's and, incredible, and actually. We'll give you a ticket. Yeah. Okay, I like it. Uh, gentlemen, we'll be watching. Congratulations. Thank you, Thank Thank you, you so much. much for joining us. Rob Lloyd, Josh Geigel there.